Today we are so excited because we are now ending the series and we're looking at having a fresh love. A fresh love. Reflecting on the past year, there's no doubt that the world needs a fresh love. As we reflect uh, on the past year as, and as we look forward and as we get into the rhythms of the, of the year, as we embark on our journey with Jesus, let us not forget love. Let us not miss what, what the world so desperately needs, especially right now, which is the unconditional love of God. Our key text today is from 1 John. And, and John, he's reminding the believers of the importance of love and loving one another. If you have your Bibles with you, I want you to turn to 1 John 4. We're going to be reading from 7 to 12. Let's read. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. What a powerful word. What a powerful teaching. John, he's teaching and reminding the believers that as children of God, we need to love one another. Today we'll be spending time unpacking this scripture, unpacking it and uncovering the need for fresh love and the need to love one another. How do we love one another? We're going to be going through that today. As we start the year together, let us love one another. I want to say that again. I want it to sink in your spirit. As we approach, as we start this year, let us love one another. Let this be the year that we love like never before. Let this be the year where, yes, we're committed to our social, uh, spiritual, physical, relational goals. Where we're committed to following God. Let us be that, that year. But let us, above all, be committed to loving God and loving others. Let us be committed to love. Friends, if that's not on your radar, if that's not on your list this year, if it's not imbe- in your, embedded in the vision of your life, if you're not looking at the importance of love, if you're not looking at it and saying that we need love and and realizing that God is love, that we will miss God and his heart and we will miss the people around us. We need fresh love. We need to be committed to love. There is a need today for fresh love. I don't need to search long and hard to illustrate to you that there's clearly a need for fresh love. More and more, I hear about divisions in relationships. More and more, I hear about family members who who have disagreements and and arguments. They fall out of relationships because of COVID, vaccines, unvaccination, unvax versus vax, mask, unmask, never coming back together. Longtime close friends, being being out of relationship because of disagreement, tensions and beliefs fueling arguments that are destroying people, just destroying people. And the isolation that we've all been in has, has allowed us to put up these walls, has allowed us to block everyone out, and all of a sudden our relationships start to just wither away. And we're in these moments where people are starting to lose touch with one another. In the headlines, there's, and in the comments on social media and everywhere, you see bitterness, you see anger, you see unforgiveness toward one another. And friends, 
This is amongst believers as well. There is a need for fresh love for one another, especially as we are living in the last days. We're living in the last days, and we can agree that, that it, it, it's dark out there. We're living in a landscape where it's, it's a tough environment. We can all be honest that it's tough out there politically, socially, economically. It's tough. And Jesus spoke about the last days. In the Bible, he was prophesying about the events of the end times, and he said this. Let's look at it. Matthew 24, 10 to 13. At, this, at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Jesus says, because of the increase of wickedness, because of the increase of injustice, the increase of evils in the world, the brokenness of the world, that the love of most will grow cold. And to grow cold, when we look at the original language, to diminish greatly, to, to significantly decrease in intensity, that the passion for one another is simply lost. And it feels a lot like right now. That all the issues, all the brokenness in the world, all the things that are surrounding us is causing our love and our passion to grow cold. Anybody here feel that today? We need a fresh love. And my prayer is that as a church, as a church that our love in these days would not grow cold, but our love would intensify that we would put so much significance on it, that we would put so much importance on it. Look what the Apostle Paul said about the importance of love. Look at how much significance he places on it. In 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 3, he says, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. What a powerful statement. He's saying, if I had the spiritual gifts, if I had all the knowledge, if I had the prophecy, if I could see, it, it's nothing without love. If I had the faith to believe, to hope, it's nothing if I don't have love. If I do good works, I do the good thing, I, I suffer, I endure. If I don't have love, I gain nothing. What do I have if I don't have love? If I don't have agape, which is what we're talking about, the biblical love of God. What do I have if I don't have the love? That God has. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 7. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects. Always trusts. Always hopes always perseveres. Apostle Paul was saying, you see, if I don't have that love, I have gained nothing. If I miss this, I have missed everything. And as I was preparing my message, I was so challenged because a lot of the times I'll tell you, my focus isn't necessarily on love. It's not really... I, the significance I place on it, how I organize my calendar, my schedule, my life, sometimes my focus isn't there. It isn't on love. I, I had to ask myself the questions, the hard questions. Like how often do I think about loving others? How often do I display loving others? How often do I measure where my love is at with God? 
How often do I, I take time to reflect on the love that I have? And I ask myself the question, has my love grown cold? Church, how much importance do we place on love? Let us desire a fresh love for God and a fresh love for one another. Because not only do we need it, but the world needs to experience it. It's so critical that we start our year not missing it. Not missing loving God, not missing loving one another. In fact, God knew it was so important that he commanded it. When, when the commandments were established, we see in the Old Testament that God commanded that we love one another. Leviticus 19.18. It says, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. In the New Testament, Jesus when he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He replies with this, Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. And many times in the New Testament, Apostle Paul teaches that if we fulfill the command of loving God and loving others, we fulfill the whole law. That all the commands, that they will be followed, they will be accomplished if we just loved God and loved one another. You see, we need that fresh, fresh love for one another. It's commanded because it's so essential. And we see that commandment Changing, We see a new command given by Jesus. It started out as loving others as we love ourselves, but as we experience the changing, transforming love of Jesus, as we experience him, we see in John, the book of John, we see that Jesus gives us a new command. Let's look at it in John 13, 34. It says, a new command I give you, love one another, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. So powerful, this new command. Because we are no longer to love others as we love ourselves, but we're now commanded to love deeper, to love as Christ has loved us. And I'll be honest with you, church, this completely rocked me to my core, to my, <laughs> it resonated with my spirit. Because loving others as I love myself, reflecting on it, you see, that's not too bad. I think I can do that. That's the standard of the world. That's the golden rule. Treat others the way that you want to be treated. Not bad. But you see, this command given by Jesus to love others as Christ loved me, that's hard. Loving others as I love myself, that gives a measure that keeps on changing. And what I've seen and what I've experienced even in my life, and I'm sure you've experienced in your life, is that how we love ourselves often changes through the various seasons that we go through. Sometimes we go through seasons where we don't really love ourselves that well. If we're honest, the way we treat ourselves, the way we speak to ourselves, the, the, the way that we discourage ourselves, the way we feel angry at times, the way we feel discouraged when our self-esteem is at its lowest. In those moments, if you were to talk to me and say, hey, Paul, go love your neighbor as yourself, I would say, well, I don't really love myself right now. I don't really feel that great right now. So I, I, it's easy to love someone that way because I don't really feel that love for myself right now. You see, but now Jesus says this, to love others as I have loved you. And it tells me that it doesn't matter how I feel. 
It doesn't matter what season I'm going through. It doesn't matter. Because the way I love others should never change. Because it's not measured against how I feel about myself, but it's measured on Christ's love for me. As Christ has loved me, I will love others. As he's demonstrated what love truly is, I will demonstrate love to others. What's the fresh love that we need for each other? The fresh love that we need for each other. It's a love that is not measured or dependent on how we love ourselves or how we feel, but it's a love that is measured and dependent on Christ's love for us. That's the fresh, consistent, unconditional love that the world needs. And we're commanded to give it. To give it how? That's always the question. How? How do, we, how do we love like Christ? How do I love this new measure? And if you're like me, you may not be so publicly affectionate. You may not be so lovey-dovey. And, you know, it's just not your natural thing. How do you look outside yourself? How do you love like Christ loves you? Well, the good news is that John, in our passage today, he gives us insight into the love of God. And, and it gives us the insight we need to love like Jesus. So how to love others like Jesus? The first is this. Remain in God's love. 1 John 4, 7 and 9. This is our key passage. It says this. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. John teaches us, firstly, that God is love. Friends, if we want to love like Jesus, if we want to be an overflow of God's love, we need to know that the source of love is God. We need to be connected to the source of love. When God is our source, the fruit will always be love. When God is our source, the fruit will always be love. To illustrate this, if you think of an apple seed, if you plant an apple seed, an apple tree will grow. And what happens? The fruit will always be an apple. You know, as long as it's, the branches are connected, as long as the source is an apple seed, the fruit will always be an apple. The source and the connection determines the fruit. In the same way, if we're connected to God and God is love. If we're connected to him, strongly connected, we will always produce love. God is love. We will produce love. The source and connection determine the fruit. You see, that's why John says, if you don't love one another, you don't know God. Because you cannot be connected to God who is love. You cannot be connected to the source who is love and not produce love. The source and the connection determine the fruit. And when we are connected to the source, which is love, we will always produce love. We need to be strongly connected. To have a fresh love for others, to to love others like Jesus, we need to be connected to God who is love. The reality is if our source of love is ourself, it will be conditional. Because we are conditional. We have limitations. We're conditional people. Friends, let the source of your fresh love be God who is unconditional. Who is unconditional. Your love will be unconditional. Because he is unconditional. So remain in his love. That's the first step to loving others well. Let your relationship, 
the connection with the source be strong. Let your connection with the source be healthy. Work out your faith. Follow his commands. Develop a real intimacy with God. John 15, 9 to 10 says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. Friends, I've found that the the deeper my faith, the stronger my relationship with God, the stronger that I experience the presence of God and, and experience his tangible love for me, the more I love others. The more that I love others well, that loving others doesn't become an obligation. It's not, a, it's not like following a command, but it's just an overflow of your love from God. And most times, I also find on the other side, the opposite, when I'm just over people. You ever been over people? Sometimes, am I the only one? <laughs> When you're just like, man, people are messy. I don't know how to deal with them. I, I don't know how to love them. I don't feel like loving them. And whenever I'm at that moment, when I check the connection to the source, oftentimes it's not there. It's not healthy. It's out of whack. It's, it's the connection, the connection to God who is love, that, that lets love overflow. Fresh love starts with God. When the love of God grips you, when you experience his love, naturally you will overflow it to others. And I remember of a time where love just naturally was just overflowing. And and when you're loved, you feel loved and it overflows to others. So I want to share with you about my honeymoon. So Rachel and I had our honeymoon and we went away on a cruise and this is an example of it. You know, you feel so loved. Love has gripped you. That's the fresh love comes upon you. And what happens is it it flows to other people. You're there on your honeymoon. You're loving others. You're giving people high fives. You're taking the time to talk with them. You're just treating others so well. Yeah, no problem. You can go before me. Yeah, no problem. I love, I'll love you. I'll spend time with you. You see, it just overflows out of our life when love grips you. Even to this day, you know, love that I feel from my wife to how she loves me, it just makes me love others. Well, how much more the love of God? How much more when, when the love of God grips us, how much more when it, when it overtakes us, the effect that it will have as it flows over us and through us to others, how much more? Friends, nothing compares to the love of God. Show me something that can compare to the unconditional love of God. How deep, how wide, how high is the love of God. A love that is tangible. A love that was, we see, was living and breathing. A love that's not hypothetical, but a, a love that was demonstrated through Christ coming to earth. Ephesians 2, 3 to 5. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the desi- cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. Because of his great love, though I was dead, I was made alive with Christ. A love that doesn't disregard us in our brokenness. A love that doesn't condemn us for our choices. A love that doesn't harbor unforgiveness, but forgives time and time and time again. A love that steps up and loves first. A love that saves us by grace alone. A love that that makes a way for relationship when others turn from you. God extends his hand to you. When others say you're not worthy, God God adopts us into his family and says that we're children of God. Let the fresh love of God today grip you. 
Let it overtake you. There was nothing like the love of God. Let it grip you and flow out through you to others. And I want to talk to you, some, some of you today. Maybe you're here and you're, you're waiting to be loved. You say, well, I, I don't really feel like people love me. I don't really feel, if, if people loved me, then I would love others. You know, some people, they, they don't just, they don't, they're waiting. They're, I don't, they're, my life group leader is not texting me or this person is not visiting me. They're not giving something to me. I don't feel like I'm loved. So what happens is I don't, I don't want to love. I want to tell you that you are loved. I want to tell you that someone does love you. I want to tell you that his love is enough for you. And his, and his name is Jesus. Jesus loves you. He loves you first. So you don't have to wait to be loved because you are loved. You don't have to wait to, be fir- to love first, to react, to love others. But, but God loves you. So you can love one another. So you, your fresh love can go to one another. Ephesians 3, 16 and 19 says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. To know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Church, has the love of God gripped you? Can we say that we're filled to the full measure of Christ's love? Are we filled with love? In my experience, the ones that I've seen who radically love others are the ones who are radically in love with God. The ones who, who produce the fruit because they're connected to the source, God, who is love. To love others like Christ, we must remain in God's love. I want you to write that in the chat. I will remain in God's love. The second thing is loving others like Christ requires us to love selflessly. 1 John 4, 10 to 11, our key passage it says, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. As Christ's demonstration is our standard of love, we must be selfless with our love. What does that mean? It means to love without expecting anything in return. Friends, we don't love so that others would just love us back, but because God loves us. When our motivation is to receive love in return, we will never choose to give love. We will never choose to love those who do not love us back. What happens is, is that we will choose not to love those who offend us, We'll choose not to forgive. We'll choose not to extend mercy. We would simply give up on relationship. We would simply not love the ones who are difficult to love. You know anybody like that? People who are difficult to love? (laughs) I want you to tag them in the chat. I'm kidding. Don't, Don't tag them. The ones who are difficult to love. You see, on the other side, when the motivation of loving others is based on how God loves us. It causes us to love wider, deeper, to love all. Not thinking about what's in it for me, but extending a love that's extended to me. And our key text reminds us of Jesus, who is the ultimate model of loving selflessly. The way he lived his life, taking time meeting with others, never in a hurry, taking time to teach, taking time to heal, taking time while still being rejected. 
while still being mocked. He was betrayed. He was denied. He was ridiculed. He was doubted, but he still chose to love. Giving up his life for people who didn't love him in return. A powerful verse, Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, while we were against God's will, while we were living in offense, while we were ignoring him, while some of us were even his enemies, he still gave his life for us. He doesn't discriminate. He doesn't disqualify. He loves all. He gave his life for all. And I think about the passage of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples in John 13. And we were talking about this in our study group. In John 13, where Jesus, he, he, he comes and he washes their feet. He serves them. And we talked about the fact that Jesus also washed the feet of Judas. For those of you who don't know Judas, Judas is the one who betrayed Jesus. So we see here Jesus coming, washing the feet of someone who he knew would betray him. Someone who he knew would turn him over. Still choosing to love. Still choosing to serve. That's the love of Christ. A selfless love. And he challenges us to love in the same way. And he tells us this. Love your enemies. Luke 6, 27 to 29 but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. I think we've all gone through life with an enemy or a bully. And an enemy is, is it's someone who's openly hostile towards you. We're not just talking about someone who's difficult to love, someone's rough around the edges, but someone who just wants to tear you down. I remember experiencing this in my career, that there were just people who just wanted to tear you down, that were against you, that you didn't know what you did, but they were just opposing you, that they were just trying to, uh, they were saying things about you. They were your enemies. And I would go into work and be like, I don't deserve this. Just have that attitude, well, I'm not going to love that person. I'm just going to remove them from my life. Cancel them. Take them out. <laughs> but then the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would nudge me, remind me to love your enemies. To choose to love this person, not because they will love you, but choose to love them because God loves them, and because God loves me. And it challenged me to forgive. It challenged me to be patient. It challenged me slow to anger. And I would pray, Lord, just let me love like Jesus. Because Jesus, you showed me love when I didn't deserve it. You, you helped me when I didn't deserve it. You had enough love for the people who mocked you, who crucified. Let me love like you. Let your love flow through me for my enemy. It's hard. It's not easy. But when you decide to love your enemies, when you decide to, to love them, it's, it's, it's going to be hard. And maybe your love may not be enough, but God, who is the source, who is love, will always give you enough love to extend to them. He will always give you enough love because his love is unconditional. I want to encourage you, don't let hate fill you. Don't hate your brother or sister. Don't let hate fill you because it will keep you in darkness. 1 John 2, 9 to 10 says, If anyone claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister, is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. So friends, love selflessly like Christ. Choosing to love those who offend, choosing to forgive those who have wronged you, you will be mistreated by people. 
You will have people not like you for no reason. The Bible says clearly, Jesus says, people will hate you because of me. But he also says, but still love them. Still choose to love. Love like Christ. Ephesians 5, 1 to 2. Follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant sacrifice, offering and sacrifice to God. Love with that fresh love, a selfless love. Write in the chat, I will love selflessly. And lastly, loving like Christ means that we must love with action. The last part of our text, 1 John 4, 12 says, No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. In this passage, John teaches us that no one has seen God, but they, they will experience him as we love others. An invisible God is made visible when we demonstrate to one another the love of God. When we act, when we love with action, they will see, they will feel, they will experience the love of God. They will know he is real and that he is living in us. So love with action. As you're connected to the source of love, let people feel and experience God in a tangible way that, that they would know that he is living today. If someone needs financial help, give. If someone needs encouragement, encourage them. Take time out of your day to talk with them. If someone feels lonely, be with them. If you're thinking about someone, if you're wondering how they're doing, text them. Call them. Be in their life. Let's not be too hurried going from the next thing to the other thing, trying to accomplish all our goals that we miss love. But let us care for one another with action so our people can see that the invisible God is living and he's living in us. 1 John 3, 16 and 18. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Friends, I am so proud of our church. When many of us got sick with COVID, I could tell you that I could witness the demonstration of God's love. I saw people choose to act and love, bringing groceries, dropping off food, checking on one another, calling one another, just caring for one another. And in those moments, I see God. I see his love, his tangible love. And I'm so proud of our church. The challenge is to continue to love this way to continue to love our brother and sister, to continue to love our family members, our coworkers, our friends, the stranger, the neighbor, the people who are outside of our circles, to love in this way, to love with action, to be an extension of God. God is unseen, but when we love, he is seen through us. If you want people in your workplace to experience the radical love of God, choose to love them radically. If you want your schoolmates to experience the radical love of God, choose to love them radically. It goes the same with your family. It goes the same with all people. If you want them to experience God, choose to love them with action. See, his love is made complete comes to full cycle when we extend it to others. Act on your love. Like Jesus, you are the demonstration of God for the world, the expression of love that people are longing to see. Let the way we love be so compelling that people will have a hunger to know the source the source of that fresh love. Let us represent Christ by loving one another.
John 13, 35. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples if you love one another. So just write that in the chat. Say, I will love with action. Church, as I conclude, my prayer is that this year we would have a fresh love. My hope, my deepest hope is that we wouldn't miss the importance of loving God and loving others. That we wouldn't miss it in all of our busyness, but that we would take time to love God and love one another. That we'd remain in the source of love. That we would love selflessly, love with action. And that as we do that, that many would come to know him. That many would come to know the love of God. Many would come to know that God is real as we choose to love one another.